guys, it's Crystal, and the OnePlus 7T was just announced today. It brings us a lot of the same features as the 7 Pro at a more affordable price, but I'm also really curious to see how it stacks up against the iPhone 11. Let's open up the OnePlus 7T. Gotta love OnePlus and their unboxing experiences. I feel like the boxes get bigger and bigger. Here's a Never Settle logo. I'm guessing it just opens up like this. Wow, that is, that's a nice flap. OnePlus in big letters. And this is a reviewer's kit. That's why we got all this extra fancy stuff, but this is all the information about the OnePlus 7T. Nice little microfiber cloth. I really like these. I always end up losing mine, but I really like them. I'm guessing the phone is in this flap. Oh no, this is a nice little, wow, that is nice. A nice little notebook, triple black. Are the pages black? Oh, pages are white. Oh, is this the 70 in this big box? That's a really long phone box. Is the phone that big? Taking it back to the olden ages. We'll save the phone and see what else is in this box. We got a phone case, mm, that classic sandy OnePlus material, the carbon fiber one. It's gotta break the box sometimes. The carbon fiber material one. We can already see the camera hole. And a red case, red silicone soft inside. We have our OnePlus Bullet wireless earbuds. This is Great, there's just so much in here. Last time there was a secret flap. I think I opened everything. Just feels like there would be more. No secret flaps, just a really cool box. Let's put this to the side and get to the phone. We get a little open tab now. Now we can open without a little knife. Remember the little baby knife from last time that I used? This is a OnePlus 7T. It's the culmination of all our design and engineering efforts and crafted for those who like us always strive for the very best. Let's open the first flap to this box. We get the OnePlus invitation letter from Pete. We do get OnePlus stickers. Here's the phone in blue. I think there's a blue and silver. Does this blue look different from the last blue? Oh, it's like shinier. Wow, triple camera on the back. The teardrop, I already see that. Okay, this phone is looking good. You know, I was a little, saw some pictures. I was a little like, this whole thing was a little questionable to me. It does look like a face, kind of. It's like a Mike Wazowski. Phone is looking pretty, but let's see what else is in here. The warp charger, fast warp charging. I think it's even faster than the last one. We have USB-C to USB-A, charging cable, clear case in the box, SIM ejector tool, getting through the setup right now, and we get face unlock, but we also get that in-display fingerprint reader again, and it was so fast last time on the 7 Pro. Hopefully it is just as fast on here. All right, we're all set up and in the phone. Display is looking beautiful. Like I said, we get that teardrop selfie camera, not the pop-up like on the 7 Pro. This is a more affordable affordable option compared to 7 Pro, so we're not gonna get all those fancy features, but I feel like we get most of them here. We still have that 90 hertz refresh rate on the display, looking smooth. I do also have my 7 Pro here for comparison and just looking at the display. Oh yeah, this one was curved and this one's flat. I almost prefer the flat because this curve is picking up a big light reflection because of all the neon lights in here, but it does look good and obviously no teardrop looks better. The pop-up camera thing was really cool. Let's quickly take a selfie to see if that looks any different. We got our pop-up camera here, cheese, and the 7T. Let me know in the comments in terms of quality if you notice any difference between those two selfies, but when it comes to pricing, the 7 Pro starts at $669 and the 7T starts at $599. And because of that price, I'm really curious to see how it compares to the new iPhone 11, which starts at $699. So first, let's take some selfies to see how those look side by side. Let's start with the 7T looking nice and wide. I'm gonna quickly open this one and see, oh, so they're both pretty wide. Obviously with the iPhone 11, you get that even wider option with just one selfie camera. Both have one selfie camera. And yeah, we're definitely getting a wider selfie at the same length away from me. But I'm just gonna do one close up. So normal selfie on the 7T. And normal selfie on here on the iPhone 11. 
Let's go wider too, just to appreciate that wider view. So let me know in the comments below which selfie you preferred, but let's also take a portrait selfie since we get that in both of them. The OnePlus 7T is looking wider, but let's see how they look like after we take it. And yeah, 7T is looking wider. You can, of course, change the amount of depth in the iPhone 11. You can't do that here with the 7T. When it comes to video, we're limited to 1080 at 30 frames per second on the 7T, but on the iPhone 11, we get 4K up to 60 frames per second, and we also get those slow fees in the front, slow motion video on the selfie camera. So it seems like we get a little more features on the iPhone 11 with selfie video, but let's quickly take a clip and see those differences side by side in three, two, one. How's it looking? 7T is definitely more up close. We get a wider selfie video on the iPhone 11. In terms of stabilization, electronic image stabilization on both, which one looks steadier when I'm moving like that? How about those highlights on the top with that bright light? Let me know, guys. I think they're both looking good. From there, switching things to the rear cameras, we get three cameras on the 7T and two on the iPhone 11. They both get that nice ultra wide, a standard wide, and the 7T also has a telephoto lens on the back. The ultra wide camera on the iPhone 11 is slightly wider with a focal length of 13 millimeters and 26 on the standard wide. And on the 7T, we get a focal length of 70 millimeters on the ultra wide, 26 on the standard and 51 on the telephoto. The main camera on the 7T technically has a 48 megapixel sensor that down samples to 12. And yeah, megapixels are cool, but it all depends on how the images are processed and how the cameras handle dynamic range. So I'll let you guys be the judge. So I feel like I prefer the ultra wide pictures on the iPhone 11, but something that you can't do on the 11 that you can on the 7T is macro photography. And you can get as close as 2.5 centimeters. When it comes to video, both phones shoot up to 4K 60, but guys, I gotta be real for a second. The 7T, it brings us all the specs. It has that 90 hertz refresh rate, in-display fingerprint reader, USB-C, a near bezel-less display, smaller notch, but when it comes to video, the iPhone is kind of in a league of its own right now. How's it doing with that stabilization? Let me know in the comments below. And this is 4K recording on the iPhone 11's rear camera. Also really curious to see how it's doing with those bright areas as well. And as far as stabilization, is it more stable than the 7T? Let me know. Now, obviously one of the bigger features of the iPhone 11 this year is night mode. So let's see how these shots stack up against nightscape on the 7T. Now some other differences apart from the camera is display size. Obviously the 7T is larger, it's also 1080p AMOLED, and the iPhone 11 is 820p with an LCD panel. And that kind of sums it all up. Clearly the iPhone 11 is bringing us an amazing camera this year, but the 7T is bringing all those cutting edge features if you care about specs, and it's also $100 cheaper. But that's been it for my initial impressions. Let me know in the comments below which phone you guys would pick up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.